come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast, Roller. I don't know. We're, we're all over the place in Words. our quest for world domination. Uh, who we are are the internet radio superstars. John. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. You were questioning it there for a second. <laughs> it's are like, we? Who we are? Are. <laughs> we are, are. Too many, too many R's. Are. Are. Uh, <laughs> too many babies. Well, so we, so we watch movies that are chosen round robin by each of us. This week we landed on... Colin. Colin, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Angel. Directed by... If it matters. I think it's Robert Vincent O'Neill. Am I right yep, on that? Robert Vincent O'Neill. Yep. Also correct. the writer. Also the writer. From the year 1984. Mm-hmm. Ah, the supposed magic year. Not the I actual it was magic year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks 84 is, is the magic year. Yeah. 83 yeah. is the actual it magic year. It was 1983. Well, there we go. That's why it's so magical. Yeah. Is it? We'll decide All right. <laughs> right now. Because, by the way, this is the be-all, end-all for any movie that is brought to this podcast. This is the last word in whatever movie we bring. That's right. So whatever we think about Angel tonight, it should be taken as gospel. Yeah, and that's absolutely, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So none of you guys had seen this movie before. None right? of us. I don't think anyone's no seen one's, this movie No one's before. ever Colin? heard of this movie. It, yeah. IMDb, IMDb says no. Yeah, when you yeah. try to search on IMDb, it's really hard to find. Yeah. Too many angels? Up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And what comes up first? It's never gonna, the TV show? Yeah. yeah. And, it, well, and then it goes to like actors Dark that are named Ant. Angela, because that's right. what it thinks right. the next logical step is. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fallen through the cracks. Uh, but I mean, obviously, it was a, a thing enough that there were three sequels made to mm. this. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many of those were uh, theatrical. At least the second one was, because I came to this movie like uh, through Avenging Mickey, Angel. Through Avenging Angel. Yeah. I remember a TV commercial when I was a kid of like her standing there with a gun, kind of dirty, hairy, like pointing at the camera and saying, like, when you get to hell, tell him an angel sent you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Avenging that's Angel. Cool. Why are we? Why did that's, we not watch Avenging Angel? That's kind why of are fantastic. We watching yeah. Angel when yeah. shit like that happens in Avenging uh, Angel. Yeah. And I was like, what is this movie? Well, yeah. you know who it is, too. It's Betsy Russell. Bet- Betsy Russell, yeah. Who is now like probably famous for being Jill Tuck in the Saw movie. She's yeah. the mm-hmm. wife of uh, of Jigsaw. But back then, she was in uh, several like sex comedies. Uh, one was called um, Tomboy, and the other one was like Private School or something like that. In the 80s, they made a bunch of... Private you know, School. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this movie is... Uh, let's see. So how do we set this up? Well, I mean, the the the, the uh, tagline on the start poster. Start with the cover and the taglines, yes, because that's that's mm-hmm. basically what they're going for here. She's a high school student by day and a Hollywood hooker by night. Mm-hmm. It's the dual personalities of Angel, aka Molly Stewart, a 15 year old girl who is also, as I just said, uh, a hooker. Yeah. If there was ever a poster and tagline to draw in the. Uh, no offense, because you brought this movie, but to draw on the perverts of the world, <laughs> yeah, I believe it would be this cover and tagline. Because at a quick yeah. glance, you're like, "That's a porn." Like quick glance, you're like, "That's that's it's like, salacious." At least, it's to say the so- least. at least softcore like I Cinemax f- porn. I feel else. like it's like the cover of the Parent Trap, but perverted. <laughs> <laughs> The perverted parent trap. Well, I mean, now that you've seen the movie, I'm curious. Like, do you think that? Because I mean, obviously, that's where the uh, intention of the marketing mm-hmm. right. is going. Is that the movie that you got? No, I would say no. I actually think that like their ha- handling of a lot of things is much more delicate than I expected. At least when it comes to her. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah, I, I was agree. S- s- pleasantly surprised with how they handled I her was as the most part. Right. I was yeah. kind of shocked that like for what she does in the movie, what what they showed and what they didn't. Like it's pretty innocent. Yeah. She didn't it's, feel exploited. And, no. Like, at, everyone around her right. kind of was, but yeah. she wasn't. Well, not her. Yeah. I think that's Interesting because, I mean, they even though this is an exploitation movie, and this mm-hmm. is made by uh, New World Pictures, who this is after uh, Roger Corman sold it off in the 80s and it was taken over. So even though it's a low-budget exploitation movie, it's like they still knew there's like a there's a line of taste. 
you know? Yeah. So yeah. And they tow it, but yeah. they don't go over it. Yeah. yeah. It's a sleazy movie. Mm-hmm. It's a very sleazy movie. Yeah, but it but that sleaze like does it rub off on her. Angel? Yeah, yeah. right. Because I mean, they they do make it very apparent, like the demo, like the demographic, like her clientele are scum. They make that very clear. Like if you're into this, if you're attracted to this, you're fucking disgusting. Yeah, they make that clear. Which, wanna, yeah, right. And yeah. it makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. But they do make that clear, which again, I I appreciate that they are like making this normal. Mm, this yeah. it should not be normalized, and they don't do that. Which I'm is just good. gonna flip this cover over. It's, it's uncomfortable. Even that's, yeah, the, it's the, uncomfortable. It's the, the, the pigtails and the bows are yeah. making me uncomfortable. And the knee high socks. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it really very is. Much. And I'm just like I don't, I can't look at that. It's anymore. like a Japanese, uh, the Japanese it's anime. Uh, school yeah, girls or whatever. yeah, yeah. Nope. Which it all comes from the same gross place, so yeah. it does. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's the thing. So you know, you those of you who haven't seen this going into it, it's the like same you, you know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not exploitive uh, about her. You know, I mean, her, no, her, so you her, never even you never see her in a sex scene or anything. Yeah, like, well, it's, that's yeah. It's, I guess yeah. that was my it's, where I was going. Yeah. There's not even a sex scene that she's in. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's was, 23 years old at the time. Yeah. I was really the nervous actress. about that. I was really nervous going to that. I was like, I. Like I will walk out of Colin's basement if I have to. <laughs> right. Yeah. To go over that and considering the way she's twenty three in the movie, like I said, but she well, looks she's twenty three in real life. In real yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. in real life she's twenty three. She's what, fifteen in the movie? Yeah. She's yeah, fifteen. To, girl, yeah, right. if they had decided to go that way, that just mm-hmm. makes it a movie of a different mm-hmm. sort. And yeah. Like, but see, I think that's why it, like it appealed to me. Like, because when you see it, you put it on, you're like, Oh God, what you know, what am I getting into? And by the end of it, you're like, well, you know, it's like, okay, so it's a skeezy movie, but right. it's yeah, it going the line on the right. side of mainstream. It's, still, it's like skeezy around the main character. Yeah. It still has this weird, like, it has this care for the characters that other movies of, like, the same level of sleaze don't have for their characters, if that makes sense. Like, I mm. feel like there is a sense of, uh, like, yeah. I, honestly, the characters across the board are so well-developed in this movie, it's it's shocking. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I like, did not expect that going into this Yeah, movie they, they very much are, are making you emo- have emotional connection to these women. They're not just, like, they show that people care about these characters. You know, they're not just prostitutes that are being murdered. Mm-hmm. Like, there are people that care about them. There are other characters in this movie that show emotion about the deaths of these girls. It's that's very important. And they care about <laughs> in a movie each like other this. too. Yeah, I, mean, I was kind of yeah, love that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. The thing I loved about all the people that worked on Hollywood Boulevard was that they all like had kind of like this weird, different like sideshow position right but yeah. they all kind of seemed happy in their like way of life and had no shame about it which I feel like with movies with prostitution especially you rarely ever get I mean later on shame kind of comes into play in sure. the third act but yeah. at the, at, for the first two acts of the movie they all seem perfectly content with how their lives are and mm-hmm. I thought that was a really interesting choice to make instead of just being like we've been relegated to this and this is the best we can hope for mm-hmm. right. they're fine with it and also the shame is brought in by other characters. The cops? Well, well it's by, yeah. by the cops, yeah. the people yeah. in the school, never by yeah. the characters who are doing the stuff. Like, they feel well, the shame, I mean, but it's, like, brought yeah. upon them by the other by people. By the outsiders. I mean, right. there there were definitely, there were moments that, you know, like, the girl was talking about how she just wanted to get out of the city and find some place where she could breathe. Like, you could see, sure. they weren't happy. Well, no. You know, I none mean, of them, none of them are happy about this but life right. that they have. those moments together, they are happy, though. Like, when they're in the diner, just, like, hanging out and giving each other shit, like, they have moments of, of happiness in this movie. Moments like, of happiness, yeah, yes. Like but, camaraderie or yeah, you know, there's yeah. a yeah. sense of community or family mm-hmm. or whatever that they, you know, they can hang out. Yeah, and, they're doing the best with what they have, Yeah, basically. But I guess that's the thing. It's like this movie, which is, again, ironic for, you know, being an exploitation movie. It, like, gives characters a chance to breathe. Like, I mean, you guys were even mentioning that several scenes that just seem like dropped into the film yeah where you just get to see and experience characters like hanging out with each other and talking i mean they're not you know maybe the best written things but the performances i think maybe is what really helps it yeah Uh, you get a good performer it it, it definitely helps like even if you get medium material like a good performer will elevate that Mm -hmm. i think we got that well, uh, so we'll tell you about some of who these characters are. Well, Angel, so she she lives in Hollywood, Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard. I, I imagine she goes to Hollywood High School. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And so she gets picked up she every day. She goes to a prep, school, goes to prep school. Yeah, it's like an expensive. Yeah, prep they, school. yeah. In the beginning, it's like right. the sign says it's oh, prep right, school. Right, right, yeah. Yes. And she gets picked up, whisked away by a school bus, and there she, you know, uh, has. Uh, we assume she's learning, you know, something that'll get her out of this life at some yeah, point do we, do we know what she's like striving for 
at this I think point. It's just to get out yeah, of... it's high school. It's high school yeah. at this point. Well, I know, but pre- you know. prep school does pre- like it prepares them for right, college. So right. it, it, they I didn't do know have, if she had a specific they do, thrust. They typically have more of a focus, but I don't think they ever say what her okay. is. She just wants to do better. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she says that uh, her father has left her uh, like nine years ago, and her mother is an invalid who's uh, a recluse. We never see her, and she's you know uh, in the apartment where she lives. Mm-hmm. And so at night, Angel goes out to earn money on the street and has interactions with Johns and all this other stuff, and the street people, including um, well, I suppose the main one is May. Mm-hmm. May. Yes. May is uh, uh May. Say, May is the star of this cross film. Cross dresser yes. or a drag <laughs> queen. Yeah. yeah, May is May is the real May is star wonderful. of this movie. Yeah, I had never seen. I mean, I know I've seen it's a Mad Mad World. Dick yeah. Sean is the yeah. actor. Yeah, I feel like I've seen him in a few things. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. that he seems familiar to me. Yeah, well, he gets all the best lines. I he guess he yeah. really does. Yeah, but uh, May is like so. Is that uh, the surrogate mother character? Yeah, essentially. Yes. Who looks out for uh, the juvenile uh, uh, angel? And then she's got uh, the landlady. Mm-hmm. Solly. Mm-hmm. Solly, yes. Mm-hmm. Who's played by Susan Tyrell, mm-hmm. who you might know from Cry Forbidden Baby. Zone or <laughs> Cry Baby. Yeah. I always recognize that she's got a very distinct voice. Very yeah. distinct. Yep. She's in a right. uh, fantasy, um, like sword and sorcery cartoon called Fire and Ice that was done by Ralph Bakshi in the 80s. That sounds like, awesome. Uh, and it's based on the work of Frank Frazetta. Like they turned, teamed up to saying all the right things. This, yeah, yeah. I mean, we discussed that yeah. before. This sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah, it sounds probably better than it is, but maybe yeah. one day <laughs> on the freak show. Um, what are we if not? It sounds better than it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. on this show. <laughs> That's where you find. This is where you bring. We're you, either you it sounds better than it is, or like that was better than it sounded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like we hit one of those two spots. Yeah. That's that's actually a perfect scale. Yeah, yeah. It, really our show. Is. it really is. <laughs> it is. It's based on whatever the expectation is of the marketing material. Yeah, <laughs> yes. This thing. Um, and then there's uh, Yo Yo. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Yo-Yo looks like Charlie Chan and uh, performs Charlie. yo-yo tricks on the strip. Charlie Chaplin? Charlie, Charlie Chaplin? Charlie Chaplin, sorry. Charlie Chan. I was like, who are you talking who about? Charlie Chan. Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chan was a mystery. Yo-Yo Charlie. Had a mystery it, series. It kind of... Yeah, I was saying, that yeah. was a thing, right? The movie gives you this idea that, like, uh, Hollywood Boulevard in the 1980s was like a nonstop, like, carnival. With mm-hmm. street performers breathing fire. Jugglers and, and fire and, yeah. And balloon wranglers or whatever. Yeah. We got the cowboy, too. Skip. Yeah. And Kit Carson. Kit? Mm-hmm. Kit Carson. Kit, Kit yeah. Carson. All right, there he you go. He thinks he's the Kit Carson, mm-hmm. ah. but he's just telling stories about like old Hollywood. And when he knew Tom Mix. He knew Tom Mix. He's got he a, actually, yeah. He's, he's got a photograph and things signed and shit. And he can handle those six shooters like nobody else. Who plays Kit Carson? Is that Rory Calhoun? It is Rory, Car- Rory Calhoun. Calhoun. What? This is his Who third comes movie. back for the second one? On The Freak Show. Oh, <clears> what else was he in? Well, I'm hoping that you would tell me. But, nope. Uh, I have no nope. idea. No uh, idea. Okay, I can tell you. Nope. You tell Colin, me. Colin, what is it? No, this is up to you, Colin. This Hell is your Comes job. to Frogtown. I was, oh, not, here I was not here for that. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't either, but I've he seen was it. in uh, Night of the Lepus, which oh, yeah. you brought. I brought Night of the Lepus <laughs> <laughs> five years ago. Yes. Yeah. Unless I have him confused with Royal Dano. <laughs> I, mean, I hope not. Well, that would make more because we've seen. In I remember Royal Dano in a bunch of things because we've seen him a couple times. Maybe he was in Hell Comes. Shit. And I mean, leave it real Dano. Yeah. You gotta find out if Rory Calhoun is All right, well, Rory well You are making me look up everybody's like, comes who to the frog town. Is Rory Calhoun. If you're a horror fan, you know him from Motel Hell. He's Farmer Vincent. <laughs> there you go. Now Motel you're speaking Hell. my language. Okay, see there you go. <laughs> Farmer Vincent's fritters yep. and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh yeah, he's like an he old... is in Hell Fro- ah! Frog Town. You're okay. correct. So he's go. on the Freak Show Wall yep. of Fame. Okay, and Welcome. he's in the sequel to this apparently too. He huh? is. He yeah. did come back for the sequel. Yeah. Oh yeah, Avenging yeah. Angel. Several of them did. <laughs> well, yeah. What else are they yeah, doing? You know? like, <laughs> not surprised by that. Um, what else were they doing? So these folks all kind of inter- intermingle and wander through the up and down Hollywood Boulevard, earning yeah. their living in one way or another, and into this mix. There is a serial killer. Yep. Praying Straight on... out of Ten to Midnight. I, yeah. w- I wish it was as awesome as the guy in Ten to Midnight. Like, yeah. He starts same. off strong. It feels like a same, almost the same structure. I think the it's Ten si- to Midnight guy is far more It's a similar and... feel, similar vibe. Right. Yeah. The same, yeah. It's the he same doesn't vibe. have the same follow through. Like, no. Is this like, but isn't this like the like 
generic 80s well i mean okay so i was gonna say 80s slasher but that's not that's not it it's more like no. just the 80s psycho yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 exactly that's that's it feels like yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. seeing this i'm just like this feels like if i watched more movies i'd see this guy show up a lot more oh, yeah. yeah and that's what it feels like the guy mm-hmm. who's just like shirtless all the time working out yep just, just goes being out. weird his fucking apartment yeah being really Fucking weird. His, his apartment, apartment. there's no electricity or running water. Apparently, yeah. I feel like well, if you have it, you don't use it. You bathe in a bucket. And you oh. I, well, that's the thing no. though. Like he starts off Pretty being like kitchen. proto Patrick, Patrick Bateman with like the workout routine and like you know, but then it quickly it steers off from that because Patrick Bateman you mean would when never he, live You like mean that. when he pulls out the egg? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. steered pretty quick. <laughs> That's why I was like, and we've lost that. But. Like, God wow. damn it. Because this guy is not. No, this guy. Does uh, he say anything in this movie? This guy like mouth fucks an egg for like he 10 minutes. He does mouth fuck an egg for a while. <laughs> Wait, what? It what are long? you talking? What yeah. happens? It is. And he, gross? Sta- he stabs a hole in the top of no, an he, egg. He like, turns it yeah. and it squeaks on the shell in a way that it, made my yeah, skin was, crawl. Well, because he had he had to do it gently, otherwise the whole thing will crush. <laughs> sure. Which I mean, which it eventually he's, did when he shoved he, it into his face. So you're saying he's done this before? Is what you're saying? Yes, I'm this saying is this, is a a daily, this is a daily routine for him. This is his yeah. breakfast. Um, we can't. I don't think we can get. Do, across you think to every day he? I like think he does. Yeah. I think he does. This is absolutely. Yeah, he works out and then he. That is absolutely what he does. I can't express audience. How gross Dear listeners, brailers, and what have you, how gross this is. It's so gross. The sound it's a close up on, on his this mouth. Scene are excruciating, I'll say. <laughs> because Staring, it's just a close up uh, of this dude sucking on sucking the sucking, filling out of an sucking egg. The, yeah. And it's ah, gross to look like, at. And it's through it's a tiny gro- hole, so he's really right. getting his mouth all it's over. It's gross it. to hear. <laughs> it's from the eighties, so he's sweating yeah. because everyone's sweating the eighties. And he's staring at a picture of his mother. Ugh, <laughs> it is gross. Then he gives Put, her a nice uh yoky nice kiss. Big kiss. Yeah, Colin yeah. knows how to pick a disgusting movie. I'll because give you that. He still like crushes it against his mouth. And then, like, mm. kisses the picture. Well, what else is cinematic? Oh, this is how you know he's a psycho. Yeah, cinematic oh, shorthand I knew. for right. Ryan's crazy. We got to get the shorthand for, like, he's crazy. Working out with cinder blocks and sucking oh on God. eggs. And no, was... no running water or electricity, no bathing water. in a tub. This, and just... Scrubbing yourself no. for 10 this minutes. This goddamn scene went on fucking forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Forever. Mm-hmm. At, at one point, it at one point, sh- at one that point, Sean and I <laughs> simultaneously screamed, "There's not anything left in the egg!" Right, you have said at everything. that point he sh- he eats the fucking. Yes. Yeah, that's when he yeah. smashes it into his face. He's like, "Because <laughs> he's a fucking oh my psycho, God. crazy bastard." It's so Jesus goddamn weird. Christ. I mean, that is. Bravo to them for, like you said, getting the shorthand of like this guy's fucking. Can off. you imagine reading that in the script? He's like, mm, yes, yes, I have to suck an egg. Mm. Uh, do the I fuck? Do this? Uh, I feel bad for that actor. How many times did he have to do that? Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking I'm just the once. once. And then to, yeah. Well, yeah, and then to disappear into obscurity? Like, who is this Yeah, guy? exactly. I mean, how for he, nothing. I mean, yeah. really, though, how how many takes could it have taken? How many choices could you make in that scene? It's yeah. a close-up well, well, sucking right. on an egg. I'm talking well, about, it. like, But gagging. it's not always his fault. It's get, yeah, well, it's I'm talking about the, gagging. The lighting's not right. Yeah, that's true. I'm curious if he was... Well. I mean, I imagine, right, that in the, the way that they did this was like, okay, you're just going to poke the hole in the egg and suck on it, and your mo- your mom's picture's on the wall. And then, like, the you think focus he, puller, he did it? Yeah. like, doesn't focus exactly. on the wall. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. so he's waiting, right, for some kind of cue, and it doesn't come. And so then he's just, like, smashes the thing into his face. And then, like, they're still rolling. So now I'm going to go, like, kiss my mom's picture. Right. I think that's all the actor. Mm-hmm. Right, but, well, that's what I was wondering. I'm like, I'm wondering how much of this is the actor's choice versus right. the filmmakers doing it. John it Deal feels, is his name. John Deal. I feel like, yeah, I agree. I feel like this is the actor. Yeah, they just like, let like, it go. Well, they just keep going. Right. And I feel like you have to be in a scene like this. If you're going to do this, you as an actor have to be in control of something like that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, yes, he is making the decisions on all of this. I think he knows the role he's in. And he's just going for it at this point. I'm, I'm getting flashbacks to Slaughter High where an actor's going like way too far for a role that does not deserve it kind of thing. I mean, like maybe, like, but he doesn't this know actor's that. laying it all out there for, and then to, for what? Yeah, like we don't know who this dude is, you yeah. know? But, but he but thought later, maybe this was going to be his thing. I thought, you know, like, because when you read the script, obviously there has to be that scene that you get to where it's like, okay, you know, at some point you're going to get recognized and, you know, you're going to the cops know who you are. So he goes into in disguise and has to cut all his hair off mm. yeah. in the mirror. And I'm like, well, you know, as an actor, you're like, man, I don't feel like losing my hair for a low budget or whatever Balls this cap. guy is. He was wearing a bald cap later on, but was he cut he? all his hair off, wasn't he? I thought he was shaving his head. Yeah. No, that looked all real to me. 
Did he take it all off? Though? I think he took it all. I think he yeah. was shaved his head. Okay. It yeah, all looked he, he real did. to me. I, th- I thought he did too. I thought toward the end he was wearing a bald. No, because when he was doing he was, the, when you he was, know, not enough sun on the top. Oh no, when he was like shaving it off and he had like just the bald spot and the hair around, I'm like that looks real. Yeah, to me. yeah. I thought yeah. it was yeah. real it too. They did very well in pulling it off to make it look real because that all looked real. Yeah. Agreed. I'm pretty sure he shaved his head for. Well, I wonder that. what order they shot it in. Right, the they had to be really sure. The bald cap first. You gotta then, have like they your got to first half edited. of the movie edited, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then do this yeah. to make sure. You all remember how big of a controversy it was when Natalie Portman did V for Vendetta and yeah. actually shaved her head for that scene because they only had one shot to get it right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. that was that a was big, big thing. Big. That was a big. Mm-hmm. That was a big piece of news when yeah, that happened. It was. Yeah. It was weird. Imagine. Look at the world we're in now. Yeah. yeah, you can't go back in the. Well, now you can uh, put f- fake mustaches on people. No, you can't. Yeah. No, you really can't. You, can't. you really can't. You can't do it. You can't put them on them. You can't yeah. take it off them. You can't do it because it'll fuck up your franchise, Colin. We've all seen this. You might even tank your franchise. Tank it. Seen it big time. <laughs> It was all about that fake mustache. It was. It was. It was that is the crux anyway. of on I, which the I, DC universe shifts. I think that was just our breaking point. I think that's when we were so. just like, you know what? That's yeah. just one more thing we can't take. If it they can't like, commit, why do? Why should we? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, it was Jesus. a shit. It was a shit movie anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we have opinions on other things <laughs> beside the. We, we talked watching. about that one on one of the year's best episodes. It's coming up. Oh shit! No, because that was last mention. year, wasn't it? Uh, listener, we are doing something. He's doing a segue. Let him do the segue. Yep. Sorry, we are doing uh, for the month of January. Oh, yeah. We're going to be yeah. doing uh, listener picks. Listener right? picks. Oh, are we doing the whole month, Colin? I think yes, four weeks. the whole yeah. month. Four picks. Four picks. Four picks. Four picks. Four picks. And don't so, make us regret this, please. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Well, here's how Looking it's going to Looking at you, Rex. Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Not again. Well, I, I mean, I guess, again. I guess, or the other way to approach this is if we've hurt you, hurt us back. <laughs> oh. you know? I mean, that. Oh. Have they, but have they not hurt us enough? <laughs> Dumb. <I> think, <laughs> <laughs> wow, putting him on blast. No, huh? you know yeah. what? D- don't bring up this fucking argument again because Dom is like falling on a cross for his fucking dead heat pick, and we all loved that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We love dead like, heat. Like dead every heat. day. He's like, I'm I'm the one that brought dead heat and I am ashamed. Why? We I, loved that ironically, movie. Ironically, like when we watched this movie, there was a trailer for Dead Heat at the beginning there was. of it. And, and so we all we got so excited. We got so nostalgic. <laughs> we got excited. We were all just been like, a year. can we just watch Dead Heat again? again? Yeah. Uh, so right. here's here's how it's gonna work. Please listener. somebody put in Dead Heat again because I'll oh, pick God. it again. <laughs> All right, you can. Dead Heat's great. Here's what we want you <laughs> to tell do. me what I can't do. Uh, come on over to either our Facebook page, our Twitter account, or our Instagram account mm-hmm. and recommend a movie. Now here's the thing: it only counts starting from this episode forward. Yes, yes. So nothing you recommend before. If you, yes, if you've submitted before, send it again. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't Please matter do. before. Yes, because we're again. not going to do that housekeeping of going. No, back. I'm not going to look back at anything. Yet. I don't look at anything currently, but I'm not going to look it back at anything. <laughs> Would just find out what you're recommending. You can only recommend one movie. No, you can per recommend person. a few. Yeah, no, but somebody's going to recommend like ten. Let's. Movies. We should limit yeah. it because there will be some people that will just right. turn what into like a bunch. three per person. I maybe? think three. Three. Yeah. Okay. okay. Max, yeah, you three. Get three. You get three movies. You get to recommend. That's and then it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna hold like a Facebook poll, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. probably for the last week in yeah, cause, December. Because last time we chose the movie, we ultimately went through, picked the ones we thought sounded cool, and yeah. we chose. They're actually going to choose the movies. Like That's we're not, right. we're, we're not having final pick. Yeah, we are going to watch your movies. That's right. Yes. Other podcasts do Patreons and shit for this. We're giving this away right, for free. free. Exactly. Like, That's so how much we free. love you. That's right. So please and, and take into consideration, we have to be able to access it. It has yeah. to be on Prime or uh, or this is something. True. Don't yeah. give us something that we're going to have to like. Pay fifty bucks to hunt no. down and get a thing for like make it somewhat accessible. Netflix to us, or Amazon. Otherwise, we're something. just gonna yeah. watch this and hate you. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't abuse your do power that. either. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. What do we, don't abuse <laughs> us. Don't abuse your we, power. If, if we can't find it, we will veto your pick. Sorry. We've got uh, Amazon. We've got Vudu. We would prefer not to buy the movie. We Netflix. Will rent. Sure. And Netflix. Amazon has all, pretty much everything. Amazon if it's not on Amazon Prime, then it's pretty hard to track yeah. down because right. they have everything. So there's a few parameters, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think you can find. Something to fit into their audience. Yeah. And then in the final week of December, we'll, you'll be able to vote. And we're going to go with, I suppose, the top four vote top getters four. are yep. going to be the movies mm-hmm. that we will watch in January following our go. best of 2018 mm-hmm. episode. So be active. Mm-hmm. Yes. Get your votes in. That's right. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, our review just came to a halt. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Like, yeah. well, yeah. I'm like, and then they need to know how they can find these uh, on Facebook. You can yeah. find us. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And by, well, it's well, I mean, you can send in an email. Why not? 
Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah send, send in email. suggestions and then yeah. we'll put them in the poll. Saturday yeah. Freak Show Yahoo.com. And sure. on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And back yeah. to Angel. Right. Previously on Angel. Previously on Angel. Okay, so there's okay. also a, a police officer in this mix. Wait, yep. did we mention that the killer is killing prostitutes? Did we even say that? That I mean, is, we that, said the that girls were dying, line. but that is, yes, okay. this is the primary okay. uh, dramatic sh- gist of the movie, right? That prostitutes are being murdered. Sex workers, if you will. Mm-hmm. And yeah, by we're, this we're crazy not going to be PC killer. about it. Sorry. Yeah, the, prop, not, the proper yeah. term is sex workers, and we acknowledge that, right, but, but we're not going to be PC. It's all in the oh. fridge. But yeah, yeah, sorry. We're just yeah, going to, it's going to be prostitutes for this I'm, We apologize. Well, you're going to have to carry on now because I can. Well, I'm sorry. Wait, well, where do we leave off on Angel? Uh, well, and, and it's not just. It's and it's not just like ran like it's all her friends. Well, and right. like so, we, it is all of her group. friends. But we only specific. see one person get murdered on screen, right? There's two. I think um, uh, her first, her one friend immediately gets uh, killed. The the killer is also a necrophile. Yeah, yeah. but that's like it feels I like, hate that yes. they include that in this. Like that they say that as part of the story pitch because it's such a small part of this movie that is barely touched on that it's not fair to even call it's it just that kind of making is. him like further out there into the yeah, but like weirdo it's, abyss. If you're going to do that, go for it. Right. More. It is brought up that one time. Yeah, the yeah, one time. It. Yeah, I'm I'm cl- I'm glad it wasn't brought right. up more. Opportunity doesn't let that And that come and up again. like the one scene that suggested that was in like happening made me very uncomfortable. I'm glad it cut off when it did. Again, the movie it made showing me really restraint. uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like eh, you have to go there, but at yeah. least you're not going. They're like, the you it was like happens. the most restrained way you could imply necrophilia yeah. ever, because she didn't even look dead. Yeah. She was nothing breathing. about she her was even breathing. Dead. clearly breathing. Yeah. But you're saying, or I don't know if this was your point, yeah. that like it's almost it's almost so. Small it's not important to the movie at all. And, it's not yeah. important to the movie at all. It makes yeah. no difference on the movie whatsoever. It That's really, why it just makes him creepy. But like, exactly, yeah. exactly. But you look up anything about this movie, and they're like, "Oh, it's a necrophilia movie." No, it's really it's not. not. It's, it's not. really not. not. Like it's 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 it is no. a one one scene in the movie that lasts all of like a minute, maybe, maybe that yeah. long. And that's it. And it has no impact on the story. No, he's basically just Do the cops even know that? Body. Do the cops yeah. even know that? The cop in? says at the beginning, rolls off this like list of things that, you know, but how do they know that? Psychological profile. Uh, There's evidence two... on the victims. No. There's also, were there two people that were murdered before this movie starts? Yes. You're right. Okay. Two, two women mm-hmm. that were murdered. See, too much of this stuff happens off screen for me. Like we, we see, yeah. One and a half people get murdered, and that's it. And the rest we just hear about and hear the 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 aftermath. Like stabbed in the alley. Was Crystal the first one that got murdered? I think so. Uh, I don't know. Well, even this. You're saying names. (laughs) Okay, so Crystal. The only reason I bring her up is because Crystal is given a moment where she and Yo Yo have like this. They're apparently sweet on each other, right? As the way that street people do, I guess. Even though she's a hooker and he play, you know, has limited prospects himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, (laughs) the way that street people do. My life on the streets of L.A. (laughs) Yeah. From 1984 to 1987. I mean, they're just, they're really just carnies without a carnival, is all they Basically, are. They really yeah. are. Yeah, they Hollywood really are. is their carnival. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I thought that was kind of sweet. But I mean, even I, I love all off. their relationships with sure, each other. I like that. That's my yeah, favorite thing about this movie. Right, this is the people who see each other yeah, every night this, doing their jobs. The sense of like, community. I kind yeah. of love it. Because yeah. you, you, you try and find that in obviously different areas that you work but you know you work in a job and you kind of have these same relationships this no is, it this really is it's like inner it office really relationships it really is yeah. and it this really is just is. a different environment for it so it's <laughs> nice to see that between people Did it they're, work? They're it's gym. only weird for us as outsiders watching it for them it's not weird <laughs> they're, like, the, yeah, yeah. they're the Jim and Pam of Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're the Jim and Pam of 80s exploitation. Well, that makes it sad when uh, Pam gets uh, slaughtered in a back <laughs> alley. This is very true. <laughs> uh-huh. and, and poor Yo-Yo sitting there like, poor Yo-Yo. Oh, I didn't know her all that well, but I have this Yo-Yo that I gave her. or what I stole from the, the, top, from the fucking top. crime scene. Yeah, it was yeah. still bloody. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> Just like, oh. Ick. Oh, that poor, poor. Poor man. Poor yo yo. Yeah. Uh, and who's the other one who got uh, her other friend... Oh, the blonde Lana? girl. Was it Lana? Lana? Something like that. Again, oh, you're saying yeah, names. No I idea. She ended up in the bath in the motel She's a, bathroom. Yeah, yeah. When Peter Jason, John Carpenter's like uh, your go-to guy. I think Peter Jason and Buck Flower are in most. <laughs> I uh, love Buckflower. Yeah, but there's oh, him and Peter God. Jason. They're like in every fucking. Yeah. Every, he was in. Uh, he was the 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 father. In Village of the Damned, which we just watched, mm-hmm. who uh, you know was away when his wife right, got back. Right, right, yeah. right. 
Um, but he's like, I mean, I've never seen him be like this big of a fucking asshole. Oh, it was gross. like just well, overly <laughs> mouthy. He's fucking so gross. Asshole. Yeah. Cause he's just, I think it's the frankness of the language, which now in a movie, I don't think anybody would do, was, you know? <laughs> no, it's like, no, you wouldn't hear the C down. word twice in a movie. What yeah. is this rated by the way? R? It okay. Rated. It should be like, R. If it's not like, R, it's I'm very like, R. The fuck is this? <laughs> I don't know because there was like no blood in it. Yeah, but there's a lot of boobs and bush and boobs can exist in a PG-13. Bush? Yeah. Mm. Lots I of I was saying yeah. bush. There was multiple scenes there of bush. There was lots of boobs and bush. So, I mean, obviously Many that's cuts. there to, uh, you know, to fill the, the exploitation quotient in the movie. It but is, because you don't like, get it with your main it, character. Well, it, it's, for, it's for no reason it's every time yeah. it happens. It's completely unnecessary. Right. It yeah. wanders through the high school shower room like, right. a couple mm-hmm. times in the movie. And it, you're like, what in the even, fuck? Uh, uh, out of that, like it starts in the ho- in the uh, uh, high school shower room, and then it kind of moves over to the scene where she walks through and hears shit. It's just like you could cut that out. Yeah. Um. So it's definitely there it's, for isn't just it the always in the high school shower room. Don't we cut back to the high school shower room like three times? Yeah. Just, yeah. And that's twice. where all yeah. that's yeah. where yeah. all the nudity in the oh, movie yeah. is. Yeah. That one definitely. room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think besides the, the cheerleaders yeah, and bes- the shower. Well, besides the two. Uh, yeah, that's the that locker room. Though it's all the same room. Right. Yeah. There's got to be some exploitation. Yeah, in the, yeah, but I in guess, the movie it's where it's about that's about prostitutes, it's weird that it's coming from cheerleaders in <laughs> right. a high school and locker the room. Prosti- well, well, I guess there was there was the two, there was two that they showed them. Actually, but. now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, is there any sex in this movie? <laughs> A movie no, about prostitutes. No, no that's no, what I'm saying. No, like, there's a single sex scene. No, in this there's movie. not. This which, movie wants to be like, shocking. I'm okay with that. Which it. is fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm really okay with that. That's perfectly fine. I think it, it would have made it. It would have made it even more icky. It would have made it even more icky. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's again. I think that I don't know if it's just the time, you know, in the because obviously in the 70s it seems like attitudes were a lot more relaxed, and you saw stuff that was like Jesus, you know, especially in the lower budget. Stuff, right? Because I mean, hell, in the seventies, actual uh, hardcore porn was like legitimized yeah. briefly. You could so coming out walk of that, down streets in New York, just like ha ha porn. Yeah. This is like the cleaned up version of right. the seventies skeeziness, and then yeah. you know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I appreciate that. I guess it's a, like a classy. So ske- is this a nostalgic classy, movie? Uh, sleep? <laughs> For a period of uh, like Hollywood trash, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're yeah. saying it doesn't exist like this anymore. No, no, nothing exists like this anymore. This brings mm, me to Times Square is another... still pretty gross. Ah, not like, but not there's not neon signs that just say pussy. Because that used to exist back yeah, in the day. No, but I mean, like, They're as far as just there. <laughs> no, but the people congregating on the sidewalk are not much different today than well, they are in this movie. Well, there, on, well, there in, is in that. Times There's Square. a different version of it. There's a great documentary about the the uh, people who play the characters. On oh, Hollywood it's a Boulevard. really sad documentary. It's very which sad. Is, yeah. and it's, pathetic. It's very sad. Yeah, but yeah. it's like it's very interesting to no, see but all there's, these people. There are people so. Like in Times Square, you'll see those those tables of people selling bootleg DVDs. There'll yeah. also be tables of bootleg porn too. Yeah, sure. like oh, yeah. twice that, as many tables of bootleg yes, porn than there is yeah. DVDs. Is, yes. Yeah, yeah, because I mean the the market still exists even though they mm-hmm. basically. And I'm assuming that it's just moved to different places. It's even it gets more, just right. shoveled around it's, the same right, yeah. three block area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just weird that it was kind of out in the open. Right, I guess, it, out in the open and I guess accepted. Like this was just what oh, happened. Oh, there's and, certain delis in Times Square where that you should not go into because dudes just go in there and. Trade porn DVDs with each other. I'm sure that's so, like still it's like happened. Times Square yeah, is still really on. gross. It might look clean on like yeah. Good Morning America, but like Times Square right. is disgusting. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of which, the inspiration for this movie came from uh, so this Robert Vincent McNeil uh, also wrote a movie called Vice Squad. Have any of you guys ever heard of this movie? I have no. Yeah. Yeah. Have I, have, it? I have heard of this. I've not seen it, but I've heard of it. Mm-mm. Okay, so this movie it's, is like it's... impossible to track down. It's, oh. I think it may be, it's maybe streaming on like Hoopla and uh, uh, streaming on what? Hoopla. What the it's fuck like is a Hoopla? Li- if you go to the library and you get like their video streaming. Oh, app, yeah. Okay. It's Hoopla. Um, but it's like the DVD goes for like a hundred bucks or something like that because it's out of print. Sure. And it has Wings Hauser. You know who Wings Hauser is? Mm. He's a guy in the wheelchair and rubber. He was oh sound shit! He yeah, was, we watched uh, Rubber on this show, man. We did. Yeah, it was Danielle <laughs> Harris's dad and Roseanne. Oh really? He okay. was on The Young and the Rest. Whatever. I'm sure if I saw okay. him, I'd be like, oh yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah. He plays like this demonic rhinestone cowboy <gasps> pimp named Ramrod. 
Dem- oh, Graham you Rye. said uh, all the words, Because he's friend. like, I mean, he's like. Demonic rhinestone cowboy. Yeah, he's crazy. And he is wow. hunting down. The whole movie takes place in like one night. And he it takes place on Hollywood Boulevard in the neon slime. He sings the opening theme song. It's fantastic. Uh, and uh, he's chasing down Kurt Russell's ex-wife, uh, Susan Hubley, is a prostitute who's like, you know, she's turning evidence against him. So he's got to track her down and the cops try and find him and her. And, oh, yeah. It's fantastic. This sounds great. <laughs> and he is off. What is this called rails. again? Vice Squad. Vice Squad. I'm going to find this fucking movie. I think you should. Well, maybe you should, if you do, if you find it before me, you got to bring it here. I mean, <laughs> assuming right. that you liked sure. tonight's movie, we'll find out at the end of yeah. this. But then Vice Squad is like, you got to see Vice Squad. Uh, but this movie came about because of the research that uh, O'Neill did uh for when he was coming up with Vice Squad. Okay. And apparently, like, I don't know if he, like, ran into 15-year-old hookers or whatever, but just the, I mean, I think that gives you the, you know, that's where he absorbed kind of the flavor of the, the street and the area and the people. That's where he absorbed the flavor. And kind of uh, the smells, the... <laughs> oh, don't... Whatever. <laughs> sure, yeah. And incorporated those, you know, the to smells, give you the, taste, the feeling into the, into the script. Okay. Okay, so the cop is trying to his goal in the whole movie is to protect angel right to protect angel and find the killer of the sex workers does he fall into is he the surrogate father character no i mean they kind of hit that tone a little sure, bit i think they hit it with a few but- Characters. Yeah, it they goes do. between the cop, pretty uh, much like the cowboy and May and the landlady. They're all kind of like yeah, everyone's kind family. of looking out for her and yeah. protecting her, and they're just they're all. It feels like they're all there for in yeah. different moments of the of the film. Is it weird that uh, it's all weird? As, yes. Well, as I was watching the movie the first time, you know, there were several scenes where she's you know, you know, uh, complaining about her lot in life, I guess, to him, sure. and he, you know, where I'm like. Uh, you know, it's like I hope this doesn't be one of these things where like he propositions her, yeah. takes advantage of yeah, her, or yeah. basically is attracted yeah. to her. It felt hope. like it was going that it way. It did feel it, like, it that. like yeah. Yeah. is that set up. us or is that the movie? Well, because like every other interaction she has with the dude in this movie goes that way. Why wouldn't we expect that this one? I don't know. I feel way. like it's more us because the character has not put anything forward that would that should make us think this. I and think I don't it's, even think the actor does. No, the actor doesn't like, either. This guy I is think a this fucking is, straight he, arrow, but he. He lives yeah. in the right. sewer. I feel you know? like he is in a, a straight arrow, and I think that is all us bringing that to this. Yeah, because and- even when certain moments, I'm just like, oh, don't do it. Please don't do it. Just because like yeah. that has happened before. Mm-hmm. But I think that's all us. Well, and there's, there's definitely nothing. like a constant theme of everything shitting on Angel. Sure, right. So, and so you're expecting. I was like, well, why wouldn't it happen? Right. You're like, oh, yeah. this is going to shift, and now this is going to exactly. be a shitty thing that happens. Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. That, is, it, that feeling is yeah, I didn't, there. I didn't get that vibe necessarily from the character or right. Or the writing, it was just the feeling. Yeah, yeah, is definitely there, and I'm glad they didn't go that way. Me but you're too. always just like, oh, please don't be shitty. Come on, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. But so you're hoping. I'm wondering, like, did did ever did people expect that when the movie came out? Was it just uh, assumed that the cop was this, a good guy? Did this or? come out in theaters? Yeah, this one did. I, I'm pretty sure the second one did also because I remember the TV ads for the second. Yeah. One. And I don't know about the third one, and I know the fourth one I'm gonna, did not. Come I'm going to say officially the third one did not. <laughs> they always, they'll always give the benefit to the sequel, and then after that, they're just like, nah, just put it direct to video. It's yeah. done. Yeah. Well, I mean, they change up the the plot in Avenging Angel. She has gotten it's out of It's also a different the, actress. It's Betsy for, Russell. Or for, for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Only the first two, I think, have a little bit of connective tissue, right? Because uh, same director, uh, a few actors come back. Yeah, because uh, Rory Calhoun comes back, Susan Tyrell, and Yo Yo. Yo Yo has a much bigger part in the second one. <laughs> oh which no! Is like, I didn't oh. want to have more of Yo Yo. No. Yeah, no. no, that actor was we terrible. We don't it's need terrible. more Yo Yo. Yeah. Unless Yo Yo turns into the killer, that's a bad no, idea. No, the... he just Yo Yo's people to death. Yeah. Like, is that what it is? Oh. Well, the plot of the second one. I know we're eventually going to get to the plot of this one. But the plot of the second one is like Angel has left that behind the whole life. And she's oh, gone off okay. to college and she's, you know, a straight A student. But her college. friends are getting killed again. The cop gets killed at the beginning. Even though it's a different and she's actor. she's like, he saved me. Yeah. And yeah. so he, oh. she goes back and has to go undercover into her old kind of life oh. to find out who killed the cop. 
I ask again, why are we not watching Avenging Angel? Because it's not as good. I don't, ah, but I that's just... the point. That, that sounds better to you. Uh, I mean, kinda. <laughs> You're like that one's an action. It's more of like, I don't know. It's goofier. All right. Yeah, I'm on yeah, board. Sure. sure. And the third one. It's like, I ask you, what do we do here? Yeah. And you're asking me if I'd rather watch Avenging Angel? Yeah. No, well. I said, does it sound better? Is what I. Yeah. 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 yeah I it, think it kinda so. kind of does. Well. Yeah. <laughs> maybe one of you will have to bring Avenging Angel. That's going to gonna be a year from now. The, uh, yeah. Uh, and the third one. She is like a photographer just out of the fucking blue. Oh, Jesus. And also, also it's called the final mother. chapter, but as we know now, there's, there's a, a sequel. It's, there's a fourth it's just like Friday the 13th, huh? Right. Yep. Uh, Angel, a new beginning. <laughs> well, it turns out that she doesn't actually, I, I just gave it away, that she meets her mother in the third episode. What? Yeah, she doesn't have a mother. She's living by herself in this apartment. Yeah. Paying for everything. For oh, herself. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's revealed. Mm-hmm. It's a shocking twist that nobody saw coming. Uh, or did we all see it coming? Yeah, it <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't think the twist was going to be your mom left. I thought the twist was going to be your mom was dead. Yeah, I thought she was going to be dead. I, I, I thought, thought she was, yeah. was going to be a dead body yeah, in that yes, room. Yeah, this really well, good. Not, well, I didn't many, think she'd like, be in the apartment. I, no, I thought dead dead mother in the room. That's what I was going for. I'm just like it would make no sense. You thought to it was going to be like a Norman Bates no, situation. It, it yeah. would make no sense to the movie that came before it. But I was totally going for dead mom. To in the be room. fair, the cop went and opened all the closets and cabinets like he was expecting. Right? That. He's like, that's is there true. a dead mom in this that's room? True. I was with the cop in this scenario. Like he even yes. opened that tiny little cabinet door. Why did he open that? What was he looking for? Uh, he's just tiny checking dead mom. Yeah. That's what yeah. he does. He's right. looking out for everything i'm surprised that he didn't turn her in because she's you know she gives these impassioned speeches but about how I, she's you kind of you kind of get it right mm-hmm. like i I mean, I get it, it, but it's like morally, like, you're going to let her be a hooker at 15 years old. Is foster care really that bad? Like, I mean, and I'm sure in some places it is. I'm going to say that, like, in the 80s in which this occurred, which I'm going to guess had less regulation than it does now. I'm going to guess it was pretty fucking bad. I'm going to guess. Well, he does. Maybe. I mean, I would think for his own selfish reasons, he would do it just to be like, if I if it's found out that I turned a blind eye to this I'm fucked right. yeah. like if yeah. nothing else for his own like yeah. selfish reasons yeah. I don't know I'm more on her side than the cop side and no I'm not saying like I, I get sure. I get why he did it but I'm just saying like if it, realistically it makes no sense for him to just be like I'm gonna pretend like I didn't see this yeah. 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 he does basically I mean I think the script lets him off the hook morally by like yeah. basically saying Stay in here. Definitely don't go out. Lock the fucking yeah. door. Lock yep. the door. You know, while we catch this guy. The idea being that she is not going to be able to be a hooker because she's just going to be sequestered mm-hmm. in safety while mm-hmm. you know right. the investigation mm-hmm. goes on. Mm-hmm. There's a B plot. B plot is that eventually at school, of course, her, uh, her these guys who are giving her a hard time in school right. uh, drive by Will Arnett while and crew. she's uh, yeah. It's not actually. Will Arnett. No, it's eighties no. Will Arnett, basically. Eighties <laughs> blonde Will Arnett, yeah. Yeah, and they see her on the street corner, Which and the cover I, is blown. Right now, how did this should, never happen before? Right, she should, shouldn't she? She should expect this, or like she should have prepared for this, or just like this was a. She should have thought this was a possibility that was going to happen. She's been doing this yeah. for three years, and it's right. never happened like, before. This is a yeah. thing that she should be prepared for. Like yeah. this is a possibility. That people are going to recognize me because I'm out in public as yeah, a but, prostitute. Yeah. Right. But now I'm just thinking about this. Right. I got this. Go for it's it. It's because she's 15. They may be 16. It's the first time they're driving. They just got a car. It's true. But the, I, I mean, I don't know. I've never lived in L.A. Does I do normal people drive down Hollywood Boulevard that are not tourists very often? Yeah. yeah. You get from here to there. Well, yeah. but I mean. You drive around. Uh, uh, you become... Quickly, you becoming inured to it. You're just like, I gotta mm-hmm. fucking go down this just to get to mm-hmm. the fucking 101 and go off and do my shit. So I, uh, yeah, it, it's a thing. But you, you, that's a good point. It's like, they're, well, they're, they're still start driving. Their parents wouldn't drive them down Hollywood Boulevard ever. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. Maybe it's a dangerous area, and you don't. I mean, That's what I'm saying. Like, do people who live there yeah. normally drive down yeah. Hollywood Boulevard? I don't know. Like, That's why I'm like asking. Like, would a family? I don't think they want. Like, would a family to. car be hauling ass down Hollywood That's Boulevard? That's what I'm saying. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they want to. No, nobody wants to go to Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. They're just so like, mm-hmm. no, because yeah. they're just like we need to avoid the shit because every fucking tourist in the world. Yeah, is on that's Hollywood right. Boulevard. Assume, yeah. You, yes. You that's are how correct. Times Square like, is. Yeah. We need to find a way around this shit. Yeah. But so I kind of get why she'd be like, yeah, no one's gonna no- right. recognize yeah. me here. It's all tourists. Right. Yeah. In yeah. a certain area, there is only. I'm not even gonna get into it. This one, the filmmakers wouldn't even thought of this. There is only like one way to get to a certain highway going down Hollywood Boulevard, but you know. Mm-hmm. That's not part of this movie. It's the, uh, the yeah, that's mythical a, Hollywood. Right, movie. that is that is technical and yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do. Uh, well, actually, they, I was going to say they. You know, the secret gets out at school, but even before that, they like you know throw her in the back of a car. And they kidnap her. Yeah. Well, the impl- implication is, I think that they're going to rape her. But again, the movie saves her uh, from that because she's got a gun that she got. That she got from the chicken place. Yeah, there's, there's with, <laughs> right. with, the, with her fried chicken. The fried chicken or a hamburger, place. Or whatever it was. That was, that was that a burger. Was yeah. It was a burger. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a, It was with you a burger in it and a little mini gun. <laughs> yeah, she lifts up her burger. And there's a little tiny gun in there. Yeah. It's twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks for a value meal and a gun. Because yeah. a hooker would know yes. where to get a gun from a chicken place. Yes, yeah. she would. Who was she has the hookup. She knows all the people on the street. Yeah, so she can yeah. Do whatever she wants. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All of the networking that happens here. Yeah. Um, That's been three years on the street. She's she's got seen some yeah. shit. She's she seen knows some shit. Some shit. She has connections. Yeah. Well, she and she's people. obviously nice to all the people on the street too. So like they all right. want to so look out yeah, for her. Like, they yeah, like her. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we'll get you again. The dude they got to look suspicious in there. Yeah, the waiter. <laughs> fucking, oh my the god. The waiter. Yeah. The waiter. Shifty eyed <laughs> waiter. The shifty eyed waiter is the best. Like I want. If I do nothing else in life, I want to play a shifty-eyed waiter <laughs> just in a for movie. one shot. Yeah, for no. that, that shot that he yeah. got, he, I want yeah. that he shot. He takes that money and he fucking cranks his neck left to right, checking, yes, he does. looking around. <laughs> yes, oh. all while exhibiting Man. the mustache that he's got. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the, that. I want that. That's how you know the guy to go up to mm-hmm. and ask for the... Yes, because you know, hey, he's the, shifty. He was so suspicious. I was like, are you the cop? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I like that guy. Um. Yeah, I mean, it feels like we haven't spent enough time talking about May because May, May. We should talk yes. about May. May's incredible. Oh, May. May is such a great character. Yeah, but okay. So wait a second. Wait, before we get to that, we gotta. Okay, so the high school thing resolves itself. That basically, uh, because she's been outed as a prostitute. Yes. Yeah. I thought the saddest scene in the movie. Was when the nerd, there's like a nerd. Oh my God. That was hard to watch. That was hard, man. Yeah, it's not good. He asked her out at the beginning and she yeah. turns him down. And then after he's found out that she's a hooker, she, he offers her money. And it was yeah. just like, uh, that was, I thought that was like, that was well, hard. The but best he scene says, the movie, this is all like, I have. Is it scene, enough? Just, that yeah, was even not, sadder. That was awful. Yeah. Is that he was willing to spend all his money he had and then was like, but didn't it, think about uh, how that would make right, her feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the yeah. whole thing was just so goddamn uncomfortable. It is. Oh it my is, god! But it feels like for the for the right reasons, it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just, like yeah, I think you're supposed. I think that means that you're you're okay if you react that way. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, That's how I judge myself <laughs> right. on these scenes. But yeah. it, it does. Ugh. It feels like it's just like oh, I feel bad for everyone in this scene. Mm-hmm. Just like, but oh, I don't think that character's so intentions sorry. were bad. I no, thought it was. It was. He thought he was doing the right. It's thing. It was so like honest. It was like I will do whatever it takes to go out with. Well, you. Well, and right? obviously in his yeah. mind, he's thinking, well, she said no because I never told her there was money involved, right? Yeah. Like that's what he's thinking. Well, yeah. You know, she always shot me down because be, yeah. there was no yeah. money involved. It's heartbreaking. So yeah. he thinks he's doing the right thing. That's oh. what makes it so oh. awful. I, it, it's so heartbreaking. Because when the movie bears that out by just yeah. his reaction is like bewilderment that she turns him down. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, what did I do wrong? I don't right. know. This is what this movie, know, this is how a movie works. called Angel that has four sequels <laughs> made me feel that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, a scene where like Two, we're like something really bad's happening, but you feel for both people on either side of it. Yeah. How often does that happen? Yeah, like oh, they did it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's but, also uh, oh, sorry. I was like, I just I I can't get over the fact that these three fucking jock idiots told the entire school that they like gang banged her and she's a prostitute and everyone believes them. Mm-hmm. This is a course, why would yeah. they believe them? Yeah, because she like pulled a gun on him and totally dominated them in that. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. Bravo and the one her. guy pisses mm-hmm. himself because you know you got to go right. All the way. Yeah, good for her. Yeah, but she has no recourse because she doesn't have like as a, as a high school student. I would have never believed that shit. I would have thought like, it was a humorous rumor. At like, best. are you fucking kidding me? Get the fuck out of yeah, here! But in no this way. Isolating her because she has no friends. There's no one to back her up. 
right? Yeah, because, because she's it, a she hooker. can't afford to make friends. Yeah. It's even yeah. brought up earlier because she goes to the counselor who comes back later in the movie. He's just like, you don't seem to be participating in like social events with yeah. like other students. Yeah, because I, I would have said, because I fucking hate everyone who goes here. They're assholes. Right. Why do I want to socialize yeah. with them? You know? Mm-hmm. It was but because just like of a that, it makes yeah, sense yeah, exactly. later. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. The, the counselor is like the, there's like the cop and the counselor who are like, these people, like they take their jobs seriously. Mm-hmm. Like more seriously than in reality, I assume. <laughs> it's like they are, you know, because the counselor is like, I'm going to go to your home. I'm going to find out, like, you know, I'm going to investigate. This you would hope her. people are like this. But yeah. yeah. If I'm going to go in there and talk to your mother, blackmail your landlady. <laughs> so I can yeah. get in there and talk to her. Going to grab her and fuck her up. Yeah. I like the way that she can, you know, she swears at her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's like, purposeful. She can just be a badass. Right. She, needs to. Um, she can turn it on when she needs to. The, uh, but yeah, but May. Okay, so May. May's right, character May. is set up in uh, a number of humorous scenes, I think. Like, May's got the best lines yeah. in the movie because he's always, or she's always deflecting, like, the tension of the scene, right? Mm-hmm. And then it comes to a point where, and well, even in the scene where uh, May meets the counselor at, uh, at Angel's place because he pretends to be the mother yeah. and the counselor sees right through it. And they have like this little, you know, they reveal like who they actually are. Yeah. I think. Uh, it's right after that, that the fucking uh, Harry Krishna serial killer who's right. been tracking Angel breaks in and gets into a life or death struggle with May, who's still cracking jokes. Like, wow. Yeah. Uh, still cracking that, jokes. And this yeah. fight goes on maze the through best. every room of the house yeah it trashes the entire well you gotta <laughs> yeah. if you have all that furniture you gotta break it yeah the way that couch broke confused me if it, yeah. well it, it felt like a pull-out couch and so it i thought like, it might have been a futon like a something like it looked like a futon that was folded into a couch and when they like hit it and they knocked it down into a bed yes. but only half of it went down into like the one corner was still up the and that's why was i was confused we'll say that <laughs> yeah. if nothing else yeah. like that thing was not yeah. just a couch but it looked yeah. like the roseanne couch it had that plaid <laughs> yeah. you know uh, grossness kind of, yeah. yeah uh plaid grossness yeah mm-hmm. that's right i like the way the angel has her own room is like this little girl's room it you know, it's yeah. like, really is they're really going figure. for the little girl aspect of they're mm-hmm. really trying for the the black and white versions of like this character mm-hmm. little girl in her room she's 15 she's got a poster bed and, and all which that like okay that room and... was like an seven-year-old girl's room not yeah, a 15 not... year old girl's room that yeah. was a stretch but it's a little weird, but you know mm-hmm. they're really trying to to show you like the opposite ends mm-hmm. of what her character should be. Yeah, yeah. And then May gets savagely attacked. Oh, May! In a scene which I was just—it was funny listening to you guys react to it because, because we love. May I know. I was like, up this, to this, this movie point. is working. At this moment, I was like, this movie is working because they're all sitting there going like, "Oh no, don't kill May!" You know, like, don't kill people. May! Oh, May no. Yeah. yeah. Because we're with her, and they, and I yeah. think it feels like the filmmakers know it mm-hmm. because they give May this moment. They give her a big fight with the killer, yeah. mm-hmm. and a moment where she, like, uh, uh, where she, obviously she's getting stabbed by the killer, and we're going, no, no. She, like a moment where people will be screaming at the screen. And yeah. Like, no, mm-hmm. don't do this to the character that we've obviously come to like at this point. Yeah. She's the only victim that fights back, right? The other girl gets a blade held to her throat and like gets her mouth yeah. covered. I mean, we don't see the one right, right. in the so shower. We don't know. Yeah, we don't, yeah. Know. We don't know about the but, fighting back, right. but it's just like it is a big thing that she fights back. Yeah, yeah. It's and the only person we a, see fight back. She yeah. has a touching scene with the landlady. <gasps> the landlady is like who they've a, been who've been bickering yeah. for the entire movie. Oh, they're like the fucking odd couple. I love that, which is great yeah. Yeah. because it, like I love that. Di- right, you started off and just like they're fighting and they're bickering and all that stuff, yeah. and then you know shit goes down and they have this. Emotional moment, Colin, mm-hmm. which made me feel things I didn't think I was going to feel. In your exploitation movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> right. In a movie called Angel. Uh, all right. I felt a lot of things in this movie where I didn't think I'm just going to feel like a movie called Angel with mm-hmm. this cover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to feel things, Colin. And That's I good did. marketing. And I did. <laughs> that that bickering back and forth between them felt like an outtake from Crybaby. I was it like, I've se- I was like, I've it seen did. this movie before, yeah. and I loved it. Like, but really like the did. death scene, or no, no, the, no, the, the landlady land land. playing the game, the yeah. landlady yeah. game, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Crybaby hangs on scenes I, like that I, for really a long does. time. Yeah, for an exploitation. How was what ninety three minutes? I think I, I read think on so, this. So. Yeah, for a ninety three minute movie that decided it was going to take the time to have that scene between those two, I appreciate that because I don't think that these movies do that often and so i appreciate that they would have those between those characters and then have the scene 
between May and her. And May gets stabbed. Nice. Yeah. This I, is, yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really loved that dynamic between the two of them. But at the same time, that scene was going on, and I was like, we haven't seen the killer in a while. <laughs> yeah, did he go out the window or there what? Is that? He's yes. not still in the room. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, he has a scene too, which I thought was surprising. Uh, well, I guess it surprised me when I saw it. And I'm like, wow, this movie's just committed to like just move forward. Is when they. Uh, they do identify him and they bring him into the right. police yeah. lineup. Right. And you're like, okay, this is going to be one of those things. She's not sure if he's the one or not, whatever. And a uh, rookie cop with uh, his gun in his holster goes in there. Dude grabs it and like is blasting his way out. Of the yeah. Right. So I was like, in, whoa. In, which in not knowing the scene sets it up where it feels like this should happen. But she expresses that she doesn't know who it is. In the lineup, like she can't pick him out of the lineup, but then she like sees him and she's like, oh, that's the guy. Like he freaks out aside from her recognizing him. You know what I mean? Like just because oh, yeah. he's in a cop station. And- yeah. Well, well you see him like free- in the back. Right. He's, he's yeah, out. yeah, he does. Not entirely, though, because fir- he's like planning. He's planning what he's about to do. But it wasn't until she screams, that's him, because she recognized his shoes. That's when he freaked out and grabbed the gun. because it was over the loud. The guy was still talking. He was still talking. And, and, thing? and she yes. said it. Okay. Yeah. And so he, he heard. Like, oh, right. Because he they're cl- telling the cop to get out of there. Exactly. You're right. The he logic could, of it. Clearly, he had the plan. He had the plan in order, but he wasn't going to act on it until he heard it. Until he heard it. All right. It was a really good way to to like kick off the tension by having those veteran cops on the other side of the wall be like oh shit he's in there with his fucking gun get get out and they're like they're like quickly get out like they're, they're right. more and more in panic yeah right. yeah you're yeah. right and then he they said it and they're yep. just like could yeah. the officer please yeah. exit the room yeah yeah, right. yeah. And she, uh, that's, well. oh shit that's him i recognize yeah, that scene right. was actually executed pretty well yeah. mm-hmm. right looking at the logistical yeah. yes you are correct <laughs> mm-hmm. well uh this and then he just blows some motherfuckers away yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah and disappears with well, unlimited bullets, a, apparently. A <laughs> unlimited bullets. Unlimited. He, uh, well, I mean, the movie also has, uh, we have always joked on this show about Chekhov's gun, but this one actually always. does have Chekhov's gun and Chekhov's, uh, you know, like. And dual, Chekhov's six shooter. Six yeah. shooter. <laughs> yeah, at this point. Because, Bravo. I mean, Kit is also a lovable character, this curmudgingly old guy who thinks he's in the Old West and nobody's like, you know, dissuading him. He's not even this. really curmudgeongly. He's, he's, well, pretty, he's pretty right. chipper. No, he's yeah. just got stories he's from happy. like his times in old Hollywood. Yeah. He's more. Not, Senile. Jovial. Jovial. No. He's but a little it's, it's senile. Like, yeah, well, yeah, it's no, he's like, a little senile, senile. Well, yeah. It's like the transition. Like, we got to the point where the Western used to be Hollywood. Like, that was the big thing. And then we got to the transition where the Western isn't a thing anymore. And he's still living in that era where yeah. it's like the Western was the whole Hollywood thing. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't so have the, anything else. Right. Yeah. Well, and he's even, the leftover from that. that. like, establishes that, where, yeah. like, they want to take him away to the retirement home. Right. Like, oh. And he's just hanging on his stories. And, and he's yeah. getting right. kicked out of the Brown Derby, you know? Yeah. And he's realizing oh. that everybody else is, you know, like, but Tom Mix is dead, kid. Like, oh, right. I <laughs> have to explain to him. Like, yeah, no, he's dead, <laughs> too. Yeah. 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 Um, but so there's this, you know, she eventually, Angel gets the, having been fed up with this, May's death being puts her over yeah, the top. Yeah, they've killed As a bunch of her should. friends and you kill fucking May. She's right. done. She's At done. least She's two of her friends and May. Yeah. 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 She gets like Dirty Harry's 45 Magnum, which I think was uh, the landladies. And, and, like, and that's a huge gun. Oh, yeah. For this little girl <laughs> with this huge. gigantic fucking She gun. should not be shooting this and, and, uh, Maintaining her balance, yeah, she should be thrown it should back. Be blasting her right yeah. out of her A lot of kickback with that, yeah. yeah. But she goes stomping down Hollywood Boulevard, and this is like one of those like iconic. I guess this is where the movie was like. I'm like, I'm in on this movie when this happened. Just that image of her like going down the street with right. this fucking gun, and everybody like, yeah, what the running, f-? you know, back, back you yeah, know? yep. Because the pedestrians are like, what the hell's happening, you know? And she's yeah. just opening firing a fire on him yeah. uh, when she finds him in the street. Which leads to the big chase that gets all of our characters together in a you know the, in an alley, where uh, I was actually because you had said Sean had said you know when I think uh, Rory Calhoun's character was introduced it's like man we better have like he better come in that's that was hope I'm like we, we if you inter- it feel like it was introduced and I wanted those six shooters to come back because he gives her a shooting lesson earlier in the film mm-hmm. and I'm just like okay. Uh, it's good for her, but I like, I want those six shooters to come back. Like that would be a great thing to have in this movie. 
I was hoping for it. Yeah, but he gets to blast away the uh, the bad guy at the end, plug and fill him, fill him full of lead. In a chase scene that's a bit too long. Probably, yes. It does I would change agree. a bunch of locations, which I think is, but it does kind of go on. Because they go down the street, and I think they're showing off, like, maybe parts of how, whatever. It, it goes on a little too long. It does. It's unfortunate as well that... Can I have a beer? Yes. Uh, of course, like... Uh, or of course, whatever. Um, it's unfortunate that I wanted Molly to be the one who kills him. Kills him yeah. to finish this whole thing off. Yeah. And I thought like the alley scene was where I thought this was where we were gonna go because I wanted because she ends up chasing him down the alley and then the cop ends up following behind her mm-hmm. and what I thought would have been the best moment of this is that they both come to like uh it gets to a point where they both see him and they both aim at him like she's got him and then he's in the background like over her shoulder and they both fire at the same time and get him and he's dead like that was the scenario i had built out in my mind where he's part of it and he's dead and yeah gone. that would have been pretty badass i think that would have been better. but also like, i wanted her but also for this character like you you want her to have some sort of peace and on top of everything she's been to you want her to have killed a man too do you like that's a lot i i, I don't know that i would want that for her yeah see i think that's what they were going for yeah uh, by giving, i guess so, so like, yeah uh, but are they taking something away from her in order uh, is is her is that would have been traumatic. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't feel like they're that's taking the thing. Away. Like either it's traumatic for her, or it gives having... her peace. Like you, it's one way or the other. It doesn't. It seem like that's what she wants is to kill him. She's she's I, chasing oh, yeah, him yeah, with yeah, the yeah. gun this whole movie. But so why not just let her at that moment? But once they're in the alley, it doesn't seem like that anymore. She seems more scared than anything. Yeah, but I think she. I think she wants to kill him. But the movie is the the movie's morality is protecting her because basically, yeah, like that's said, true. She's innocent. Her, yeah, because we haven't ever seen her have sex with anybody. It's just like it happens off screen. Right. They so, are you know, keeping her innocent very mm-hmm. much. So she she's not adding murder That's to the, true. you know. But I like the fact that it's like, okay, so if you're going to rob the audience of her cathartic moment of, you know, blasting the guy away, yeah. because at least it's justifiable homicide, mm-hmm. right? I mean, clearly. Uh, but they give it to uh, Kit. Yeah. They do. You know, which <laughs> I thought was just shooters. fantastic because it's like that <laughs> guy has like, you know, I mean, clearly he is adept at, you know, uh, he's a good shooter. He's a right. good shot. As they've shown <laughs> earlier in the movie, yes. Yeah. But to actually give him his moment to come in both barrels blazing. I mean, it's like a hero shot, too, with the smoke <laughs> and all that other stuff. He's wounded because he'd been shot. Right. I'm like, that's fucking like a, a cheer moment. Yes, yeah. It is nice. To see him blow away the bad guy. It, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. I do like that. If it, Right. If we're not going to get, like, the main woman to do that, that's the best, like, runner-up we're going to get. Yeah. I don't know. It worked out uh, pretty good. But, and then it's like, cut, credits, and boom. It out. really is. Because once they kill the bad guy, it's like, why are we yeah. sticking around? Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what angel what revenge of angel what, uh, what the fuck is it angel? that's what that's for oh, yeah that's yeah true that's, that's what the sequel. next movie that's what the next <laughs> hour and a half is for yes mm-hmm. yeah more uh, her taking down like the mob or something is she taking down the mob what it's, is the what is what is well because he's investigating like a drug. Uh, it's like the those eighties or like the eighties they're not cocaine cowboys what are they? it's the business suit drug dealers. Right, of Los way. Angeles. Yeah. That's and, just a different way of saying cocaine cowboys. Yeah. Yes. And Business he, suit drug right? dealers. Because we watched, uh, was, I come in peace, we were talking about the, right? The, oh, I think we were talking about like in Miami Connection. Like oh, they're, maybe. they're, yeah. they're, cow- the three they're peace cocaine suit. cowboys. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But they're also just like suit guys who are just doing drug deals. Yeah. Because it seems to me that somehow, like there's a mole or some, I don't know, that somehow he ends up getting shot, like in the very, toward the, I think they have like a scene together where it's the cop and Angel. Because it's like uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2 or all these things where you do a sequel and it's like, these people lo- know each other a right. lot more than they should from this being a following on from the last <laughs> right. movie. You know, like he is right. her basically like guardian and, sure. like, you know, and so she's like, yeah, I'm doing really well and, you know, okay. whatever. Like they've kept track of each other yeah, after yeah, yeah. the first oh, yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All and right. then he goes back to Hollywood and gets gunned down. And so Aww. she comes back to, you know, find out. Avenge him. 
Yeah. Oh, as it says. I like that it says in the DVD here too that she was a law student in college. Uh, there you go. Wait for part one or part two? Part, part two. two. Okay. She's a law student. Yeah. Had a girl. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Good for her. Good. Yeah. Again, eventually we'll get a, a fifth sequel where she's just a lawyer uh, prosecutor. I know. People. Should we make uh, ancient? No. Okay. No. Well. <laughs> no. We're still waiting on seven f- films to bring this out on Blu-ray. It might be out on Blu-ray. I don't know. We have no idea. Yeah. It'll be hard to find it on Google. I'm sure. Yeah. Angel the TV series is going to come up every time. Yeah, yeah. Angel yeah. No one recognizes right this up. movie, apparently. Okay, so uh, any last uh, stray observations about this film before we go to mailbag into our wrap-ups? I don't think so. Sally uh, has a weird D-plot of she paints. She paints She's these, an artist. She paints this these, is fruit with gun. Yeah, she yeah. paints these really like minimalist, weird, abstract paintings and uh, apparently like gives them to her... her uh, tenants, tenants? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and uh, if they don't have them up on the wall in their house, she—that's a problem, she apparently. Yeah. Apparently. yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. Angel is trying yeah, to I make think, her feel good. I thought right. that was—I thought that her. was kind of cute because yeah. she was like, right. she didn't want to like hurt her feelings. Yeah, right. I got yeah. the impression though, if it wasn't up, she'd be like, "Where's that painting I made you?" Like that was yeah. the impression well, I got. Right. Well, she would definitely ask, "Like, where's that?" painting She's like, "I got to move things out of the way." She's studying her own painting. You know, when she goes into Angel's apartment. Yeah, yeah. But these are good little characters, right? No, they are. They're great. That was just one we hadn't touched on yet. Yeah. Everything. So here's what we're going to do, listeners. Stick with us. We're going to tell you whether or not we recommend Angels. We go around the room and review, give our final wrap ups. But first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And so to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor, to bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Is he sucking on an egg? God damn it. He learned the wrong thing from this movie. I don't think it's raw, though. I think it's (laughs) hard-boiled. Oh, he's going to suck on that for a while. (laughs) Don't no one tell him. Uh... (laughs) Well, I mean, uh, as as all I see is you going (laughs) 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 really trying hard to suck on that egg. Keep trying, but he'll tire himself out pretty soon. No worries. Take a nap at some point to begin with, and you suck really hard. What color do you turn? Red, maybe. Blue. That's a very good question, Colin. Okay. I don't know. Things to think Listener, about. Listener, tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Things uh, to think about. Does it depend on like the blood flow? Yeah. I, don't I think know, that's what I'm saying. He's is got no blood, blood flow. Or is it yeah. green blood? I don't he's know got no blood flow. That's right. Uh, so we, should we remind folks how they can uh, get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. For the time of your life. So about tonight's episode or ah. tonight's movie, Angel, mm-hmm. Ryan Handsome Jans- Handsome Jansen writes in and says, right. "How the fuck does something like this get bankrolled?" It's yeah, a great question. That's a really good Trust. because it didn't like it was sleazy, but it seemed to have a decent amount of money. Like it didn't look particularly cheap. I didn't think nothing. Right. Nothing about it looked really bad. No. Like it, but it had fine. like modest aspirations, I think too. I mean, I it's mean, not it, full of big action set pieces. Sure. Okay, or, but uh, if you read, like, I made the mistake of reading the synopsis of this movie before we watched it, and was really concerned. Because, I was too. I was very <laughs> because concerned. the synopsis of the movie <laughs> says Where? never uh, IMDb. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the synopsis of the movie says like a fifteen-year-old prostitute, and I'm immediately like, what? No, nope. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah. I was Let's very never nervous. Never do that again. I was yeah. very nervous. So that, and then it goes into like on Hollywood. Trust me, guys. I mean, come on. But I don't usually. But like this is a movie that there's like no information on the internet, so I can't like double fact yeah. check and find out like what I'm really gonna get into. Mm-hmm. But just like that's your like log line to pitch is you start with a 15 year old prostitute yeah. and like yeah, yeah, like a, he has a good a point. Like, oh. He has a good yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, I mean I don't uh, I don't know if it necessarily looked cheap, but it definitely looked like low budget TV movie. So uh, Mike Welch writes in and says you should double feature this with Vice Squad. Wow, how weird it was in the 80s. I thought her friend was Tony Curtis for years. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tony a Curtis. little bit. I can see yeah. that. Uh, talking about May as Tony Curtis? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did Tony Curtis play a lot of women? Well, just in Some Like a Hot. Just in, just is, in that, yeah. right. Okay. That movie was huge, though. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. I have not seen the Marilyn entire Monroe. thing. Oh, I love really? it so much. No, I haven't. I it's know. still hilarious. Like, okay. I still watch it, and it still cracks me up. Right. Jack Lemmon is I gotta watch that. on yeah. fucking point. It's a classic. It's funny. Oh, no, I yeah. know. It is. And I want to watch it. Yeah. Uh, Hanford McIver Lang writes in and says, are you talking about the transvestite? Wasn't it Dick Sean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dick it Sean, was. Yeah. 
And he says, I saw this on Netflix in 2010 and always loved how she was walking around with the hand cannon for so long, unfettered by the police. Yeah, she was on a fucking mission. More movies could use Dick Sean. I want more Dick yeah, Sean. What happened to Dick Sean? Yeah. I, I don't know. He's I'm not in Avenging Eight. No, he's not. He's dead. Oh. Sorry. The oh. uh, character <laughs> may. Doesn't make it. You got my Sorely hopes up missed. that like, oh. they, they retconned that or something. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of hoping, like, in the process of watching this movie, I'm just like, wow, it feels like she's dead. Maybe the co- the ambulance gets there, take her to the hospital. At the end of the movie, just mm-hmm. like, Dick Sean is alive! Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping. I think, yeah, that, uh, that's it would have been good. Why Avenging Angel? Not as good as I mean, yeah. it, it kind of bothered me a little bit that she was just, like, holding him as he, as he died. I'm like, maybe put pressure on the wound and call the cops. Maybe like, something. maybe, yeah. maybe. I was kind of hoping. We get but fine, let him bleed out. That's fine, sure, too. That's fine. Either way. Well, Dom Cree writes in about the Miami connect. God damn it. God damn it, you Colin. It again. Miami about connection. Miami connection. Yes. And says uh, about Michaela's rendition of Maury Smith's uh, monologue in that film that you did him proud, Michaela. Bravo. You Thanks, did him Dom. proud. It was a pleasure. Yeah. I, I, I only hope we watch more movies with monologues as awesome that I can recite. Yeah, she should be nominated. I mean, it's a bar, it's a high bar <laughs> that that movie set. Is there, yes. is there a Webby Award or something yeah. like a, a yes. potty? Yeah. The potty? The potty award? I don't know. You don't want the, the potty call? award. No, the potty no, award. There are bad names for these awards. <laughs> yeah. so. Is there like a breakout artist or something? I don't know. Something. Sure, something. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Best moment. I'm serious, yeah. though. If, you, if you're if you trying to be an actor, use that monologue. Because no one <laughs> will know what right. it's from. Yeah. yeah. No one yeah. will know what it's no, from. No, I was thinking like in high school when you're in speech class and you have to choose like movie like movie monologues, that would be perfect. Oh, yeah. You know, some. Yeah. has done it though. Now. I hope. So. I hope oh, yeah. so. Well, especially because so. like if people don't know what it's from, they might start to be like, "This he's like really bearing his soul right now." Yeah. They might think you're <laughs> legit. You know? Yeah. I just I don't know. Once you get to the my father was black American, people are gonna be like, "All right, <laughs> this isn't this isn't real." That'd be is, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. My fucking high school speech was Bill Pullman's speech from Independence Day. Well, that's oh. the go-to. Yeah. That right? is the go-to, I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, see, there are I, a few did, I did. I did the fucking. Well uh, I did Ron White. Did you <laughs> right, from, Ron White? I didn't know. I did Ron White from what? the from the first uh, uh, Blue Collar Comedy Tour. Oh my God! Who, who are you? It who? killed. You what? shut up. Who it are killed. you? It was for speech class. I think I either did uh, Christian Slater's monologue from Pump Up the Volume. I know I did that. Oh, or of course you did. The Gemini Killer from uh, uh, Exorcist Three. Nice. Uh, I did I, when I was in college. I did one of many Dexter's monologues oh, from Dexter. There so there you go. Which there are uh, many to choose from many, in that show. Yeah. So you all just got a deep look into all our personalities. <laughs> yeah. uh, Novato Judoka writes in and says, "As with Samurai Cop, after seeing Miami Connection, I immediately bought the Blu-ray and have for and have them together as a double feature." There yeah. you go. That's probably yeah. the, it's, it's it kind the of best a, double feature. It's a or thing. The worst is, double feature. This is a thing that's happening where we're like cult movies are getting like pushed to Blu-ray at like yeah. a rapid I know, pace. I think, insane. I think as they should. They get there faster than like But when's the bottom gonna movies? fall out? Right, and that's yeah. that's very true. Yeah. Uh Andrew John writes in, he is incredulous that they were college kids. He says they are conservatively forty five years old. <laughs> the picture he posted to Facebook. I need to see this movie. Yes, you do need to see this movie. Yes. You're correct yes. on all fronts. All people should. B movie poster vault says, "Is there any part of this movie that isn't gifable?" No, there's no. not. No, it's all, it's the all wonderful. Yeah, every yeah, frame. Yeah, especially. I just want to see. I want gifts of uh, YK Kim shoving grapes into people's faces. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that's. It's and unnatural. Like, there's so many weird. That's things. if, like, I went, how would you guys feel if I just went around shoving grapes into your faces right now? I mean, sober Sean, I'd be a little weirded out. Sure, yeah. but drunk, drunk Sean's Sean? a little more acceptable. <laughs> yeah, I would fine. We, well, it's something it would that make you more would sense. do. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> we'd be like, you do, you do out hugs. Why not grapes? That's <laughs> true. But again, I'm not like. In my hugs, I'm not just like molesting your faces, yeah, though. That's so true. That's you're not. Difference. You're, you're more gentle than that. Yes, but exactly. Like, that <laughs> yeah. felt more forceful in this movie that's than true. I would ever be. That's but if you were not going to be like, eat grapes. <laughs> if you were drunk, we'd have something to write it off on. We'd be like, sure, oh, he's right, drunk, yeah. right? Yeah. But no, if you were sober, we'd be like, yeah, but was sober. he doing a, like a, that was a metal performance, wasn't it? I mean, it was a rock <laughs> no. performance. But no, no, was on stage no, when he was no, doing the creep thing. In, this is in the apartment. Yeah, we we then oh, all the, or, then all right, the orphans okay. live in together. Yeah. It's the same. It's it's almost it's the same angle in which the monologue is delivered. Yeah, yeah. except it's not happening, and he's just shoving <laughs> yeah. grapes into people's faces. Yeah, it's, it's, it's if you did if you did weird. If you did it sober, you I'd be very concerned. <laughs> you give it to your friends. I'm um, going to do it next week sober. Well, and I'd be like, did you wash your hands? Did you wash the grapes? Like I would ask a lot of questions. Yes, because and they better be damn good grapes. All right, I'm. 
I'm not an asshole. I'm going to wash the grapes and my hands, okay? <laughs> right. Like, I know. They Are better you be seedless, Sean. Is they better asshole? be seedless. Sure. Whatever, whatever the local store is selling. All right. All right. Steve <laughs> Coates says he thinks he still has some of those Ninja magazines somewhere. Sure. Chris Huddleston says, uh, notice that on the magazine it says, uh, can a ninja beat a boxer? And a headline, do you think mm. the founder of MMA was a subscriber? Had to have been, right? Like, I, I, so. Everybody I was so. in the 80s. I would think so. It was so. ninjas all over the place. I'm mm-hmm. curious if you just went full boxer versus full ninja. Yeah. How would that turn ninja out? Ninja wins. Uh, MF <laughs> Mad because he can. Callan, right. no doubt, no doubt. Uh, yeah, MF true. Mad said uh, that. What if it's like correct? Bolo Young is the is the boxer though? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Did yeah. he box? No. He but did. He, like, he did. He did big. many types of fighting in street or in uh, not street fighter. Jesus, blood sport. Blood sport. Yeah, yeah. they're true. the same yeah, movie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they are. Bolo, Bolo yeah. Young versus Sho Kazuki. I mean, uh, Sho Kazuki. It would be sure. awesome. Uh, MF Mad said the scene cracked me up when he grabbed the dude's nose with his toes and spun him around. There's one scene though that stuck with me, and it's when YK Kim goes around the room and feeds everyone grapes. Exactly. It's weird yep. as yeah. hell. It's weird. Yep. Yeah. So Hashtag weird. friends forever. It's a yeah. weird choice. Uh, okay. Ryan Handsome Jansen says. Is it a power move? I is that what like it is? It, I, feel like, <laughs> I thought it I was think, giving. It's a charity right, yes, thing. He's exactly. like, he's not. I love he's you guys so much. Go for yeah. power yeah. He's just like, I want you all to be fed. I want you yeah. all to be full. If I that's have a grape, that means that's weirder. That's weirder. Right. If I have this, you all have if this. If it was I a agree. power move, it would be less weird. No, I agree with Colin. I agree. This is just the like power trying move. Take care of everyone. Was the toe grabbing? Because that's showing that I can dexterity. Foot. Yeah, I'll rip your nose off. No, this movie is like aggressively friendly. Aggressive. Right, yeah. That's true. right. We're going to be friends with you, like it or not. Yeah. Eat this fucking and friends grape. forever. Friends for eternity. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen says you guys look up an Australian film called The Man from Hong Kong. It's got one hell of a car chase in it. For the time and place, it would have been dangerous as hell. Ooh, I like those. Where it looks like people die. I'm all for that. We've seen a couple of those. Yeah. What, in Metal Storm? We thought we saw people die, Metal right? Storm. Yeah. Somebody yeah. died in Metal Storm. Rambo, and, Rambo 3, I was concerned about all the horses in that. Yeah, 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 and, I like uh, a good Road car Warrior. chase. Road Warrior had mm-hmm. one was like, like, is this the moment? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody died in that fucking movie. Well, Ryan, guess what's coming up? You can submit movies you that sure can. be voted on oh, that shit. maybe you can make us watch The Man from Hong Kong. Who knows? Maybe. Send us a, uh, a direct message or leave a comment and we'll consider or we'll put it in the in the uh, the uh, the vote. Yeah. Uh, Basin Voorhees writes in and says that I've never seen or heard of Miami Connection until it was discussed on this podcast. You're welcome. Neither had I. <laughs> what a gift. Neither yeah. had I. He says, this is that- how much I care about you, dear listeners. <laughs> <laughs> well, he says all that talk about ninja rock bands reminded me that there is a ninja rock band out there called Heavy Metal Ninja. If you like chugs and finger tapping likened to that of youths, jitter bugging to gent with the silent D's. I don't know what you're saying, but okay. Yeah, that was that was all, all right. Yeah. Did you have a stroke near the end? Of I, that? I think so. She's like, I loved it. <laughs> I don't know um, what that means. If you, it, please explain, because we are too yeah. uninformed to understand. Right. I mean, I know, I know what the jitterbug is. Not like, with the D in front of. It. No, <laughs> I don't know what that the, is. The jitter. Yeah, it's what the heck like no a didgeridoo. The, the heavy metal right, we know are so people are screaming at us now in their yeah. cars as they're yep. listening to us. Yeah, I, we're idiots. What a, I'm sorry. sorry. Guys, I'm down. sorry. Yeah, we Dumb it down for us another level, Something. please. Uh, B movie poster vault commented right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, retweeting this episode. They they like this episode. They oh, yeah. retweeted it. Nice. So. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, oh, thanks. Thank That's very sweet. Thank you for everyone I for also writing in. This and, episode, yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for a writing in and sharing. And it everything. was good. That was a good episode. That was a you fun episode. All listen to it. Yeah. Colin uh, and I cried. We had thoughts. <laughs> I cried. Maybe, I had an emotional maybe attachment. The, maybe the angel episode was fantastic. And they were, <laughs> they were, I don't know. Open. Uh, Only so, one way to find out. I know. We got to go around the room and tell you what we thought of this movie. So we're going to start with Sean. What did you think of Angel? Mm. On the fence. Uh, I had thoughts. I had thoughts about what this movie was going to be when I was coming into it. Like I thought there was going to be. Apparently, I thought this movie was going to be more Avenging Angel. Like I thought she was going to be like out there with a gun, just shooting motherfuckers. Like that's never. Whatever. Well, what? Okay. There's uh, nothing uh, on that poster. There's nothing. You're right. You're right. There's nothing on this poster that uh, suggests what I thought this movie movie. was going to be. I thought she was going to be, like it said, high school, uh, honor student by day, Hollywood hooker by night. But did I watch the trailer? I don't think I did. I thought she was going to be more avenging. Like, I really thought this was going to be part two in this. Like, something was going to start happening to her friends. 
And then she was just going to like take up arms and like go find this fucker. Uh, that didn't happen in this movie. Um, there were a lot of entertaining things in this, regardless of what I thought I was getting into. Um, May. I'm here for May. Yeah. That's basically what this movie was for me, because May was fucking badass. Uh, she was funny. She had a, the best action scene in this movie, I yeah. think. Um, so, I don't know. This is a, it's a weird movie. I think I, as we were talking about this and the sequels that came from it, I think I want to watch uh, Avenging Angel. You can borrow this. Oh, yeah, they're all on here. <laughs> like, I, I keep forgetting. We have one DVD that's got three movies on it. Um, For the budget price of, like, seven bucks. <laughs> yeah, I guess you so. You can watch all the Angel um, films. There are a lot of, I think there's a lot of good parts to this movie. Like I said, May is pretty good. Um, I think, uh, I mean, we did have the, I guess, disadvantage of watching uh, 10 to Midnight before this movie, which mm-hmm. I feel like is the... A disadvantage. Well, I think it's like I saw the character of this killer in this movie, like, done better in 10 to Midnight. Like, mm-hmm. that's the version of this character, because it feels like a different version of the same character to me, um, and I liked that character in Ted and I better. I don't know. I feel like he had better, I don't know, maybe better motivation or at least his, his arc throughout the entire thing felt cooler to me. And no, well, I mean the whole movie was better. Um, so it wasn't too, you know, his character wasn't too great in this one. Um, there's not much said about the killer in this one. I don't know. It's, it doesn't feel like he's totally fleshed out. Um, there are, I don't know. There, there's certain characters that I really liked in this movie. Um, I don't think it's enough to. I don't think it's enough to recommend the entire movie. Um, I really want to watch Avenging Angel though. Like I, feel, I feel like is. Have you watched it? Is it better? Is it more like? Is it more? Is it more? Exploitive? <laughs> is shaking is his it head. More just like fucking her blowing dudes away. Is it? There's no May no, in it. Everything I liked. Yeah, there's no May in it, but. I mean, right. everything I liked about the first movie, it's not. Yeah. You know, because it. I'm wondering know, it what just, the change is because there's so much. It feels like there's everyone's so much change. Everyone's dead. Yeah. Everyone's dead. The, the actress changes, though, as yeah. well. But I mean, it's it feels like, uh, I don't know. She doesn't have. Because she's not like connected to the world, really. It's like mm-hmm. her going, it's like an undercover cop movie. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, We're going back to it's it. It's like you don't have that same connection with her that you do, I think, in this one because like she's in a dangerous place. Sure. You know, you're supposed to, in the, but she's older and she's clearly able to take care of herself. And it's like, okay, she's, you know, basically an undercover cop investigating the, you know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. that story is just not as interesting. To right. Me. As this. Well, that's true. Um, there's elements of this movie that made, uh, I mean, there's uh, uncomfortable, I would yeah, say, just yeah. because like of what the uh, the age the actress is supposed to play versus what she looks like. Um, so you know, you, um, they're obviously going for an exploitive angle. Um, <sighs> there are a lot of enjoyable moments to this movie, I will say, but I don't think there's enough where I will ever watch it again. So I'm gonna pass. On Angel. <laughs> so this movie's sleazy, but like after reading what I thought this movie was going to be about online and then watching it, it's I think it's more like it's like a diet sleaze because it like toes the line of a lot of like taboo concepts, but never like really even shows you them. It dances around them, but doesn't actually like it's not willing to go for it. Like I saw so many things online calling this a necrophilia movie, and it's really not. It's oh, it's not. Really? Yeah. So a lot online. Yes. That said that? This is, the IMDb synopsis says like after a necrophiliac serial killer, and that sounds way cooler oh. than what you get in this movie. Actually, like he, there is one scene where it is like, yeah, it's, it's like you don't even see it. It's implied. I would that, say it's yeah. implied even like. And that's it, you know. It and it, like I said, it has no impact on the movie. It really doesn't make a difference. You could cut that scene out, and it just wouldn't matter. Uh, it, I like, and yeah, I think unfortunately, ten to mid. The, this is the ghost of ten to midnight. Like that, like that killer was so much better done mm-hmm. and fleshed out more. And you, 
spent so much more time with that killer. I feel like the killer's hardly in this movie at all. Yeah. This is not about the serial killer at all. This is Angel's movie. Bingo. Started, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But if he's supposed to be the conflict that she's dealing with, he needs to be on screen a little bit more. Mm-hmm. There are so many long stretches where we are focusing on things that are inconsequential to the rest of the movie. Um, it takes too many detours. And like I, I do love the characters and I love the relationships with each other and I do enjoy those moments that right. ultimately don't mean anything. Right, the detours are cool. They're uh, fine. Yeah, yeah but, but at the same time, like what story are you trying to tell with this movie? I really mm-hmm. don't get what the point of this movie is. Yep. I really don't. It like it, like it it protects its main character so much, but yet it really wants to introduce these really dark taboo concepts, but it's not willing to commit to any of them. Mm-hmm. And I just don't get like what who is this for if it's if it's not willing to go the full sleeves, but it's still like is like wants you to have a taste of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it like the characters are great. I really didn't expect to see like characters that I really cared about um, and that I liked seeing interact with each other because sometimes you'll watch a movie and you'll like a couple characters but like you don't really care about their relationships with each other. I liked them all as a, as a unit and so I don't think I would like Avenging Angel because I want to see all those people again yeah. that were ultimately killed in this movie. Um, so I don't think I would recommend it even though there's a lot of good things here and there there is good potential here. I just don't think it focuses on the right things and it, it 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 just takes too many detours that are inconsequential. Mm-hmm. So I would not recommend it. Yeah. Holly, um, yeah, I think I think we're all three of us are kind of on the same page here. Um, I feel like uh, you know, Colin, you mentioned earlier that it had there was parts of it that had like a lifetime vibe, and that's exactly what I was thinking when we were watching. I was like, you know what? If you take the sleaze out of this movie pump up the drama a little more. This is like the fucking ultimate lifetime movie. (laughs) And I think I would have dug that so much, but for some reason, this angle, like it doesn't entirely work for me. I I totally agree with you saying there's some wonderful components that was really surprising to me. I really did not expect this movie to be what it ended, what it was. It, I, it, it surprised me in many elements, uh, the characters definitely surprised me that um, the way the subject matter is is confronted in this. It's 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 very um, it's very delicate with a lot of things. I was very surprised by that. Um, but the sleaze is very misplaced. It's very strange to me. It's kind of out of nowhere. Um, but I, but but this is the subject matter like when you're talking about sex workers and, and under and spe- specifically an underage sex worker, like is the huge potential to just be straight up icky. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I am just, glad that it did uh... not go there because that makes me so uncomfortable more so than this movie already made me uncomfortable because it really did. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying that the good parts, it's not enough for me. I loved may she stole the show and I, I could, I could take a movie of May. She was wonderful. She put up a fight. <laughs> she did. I loved it. Um, but I agree. Not enough of the killer. And it was kind of, I, I love what you said. It was like the diet version. That's that's perfect because I, I felt the same way. Um, so it didn't quite bring it home for me. So I'm going to have to pass on Angel. Colin. I think uh, Angel is one of the greatest grindhouse uh, <laughs> trash class, sleazoid trash classics of all time. Um hmm. And, the, you know, because I guess I had low expectations going into this movie. And I think uh, what happened was I saw, you know, I hadn't seen Avenging Angel. I, I was telling you guys the, the trailer, the incident that I saw. And so I'm like, well, you got to watch Angel. So I like rented it or downloaded it or whatever. And then I was like, well, I may as well. I got to get this. You know, I have to own it. And then it came with the other two. And, you know, so <laughs> then you end up seeing the other ones. Um my expectation of this movie was met and exceeded. I guess it goes into like, this is the kind of stuff like uh, it's, it has a little bit of, it's like a genre blending movie where it has a little bit of the revenge movie, you know, toward the end, uh, the iconic, like female heroine with the guy. I mean, just visually, that, like really, and, but it is to me. only visually because I want her to have the revenge, but she doesn't get it. In this yeah. movie. Kill That's people in avenging angel. So maybe you should watch well, avenging well, angel. Maybe so, but like, well, well, but, but it wouldn't mean we're talking about watching this. Right. It's mar- but, but the marketing is of the revenge movie, but it really right. doesn't. And she doesn't marketing the, isn't the, the revenge. And this one, it's the skeevy pervy thing that you're going to see a high school student by day and a Hollywood hooker 
by night. Right. Here's the behind the scenes look of, you know, what you expect is happening somewhere in Los Angeles. And what you get, it was a very surprising movie. I thought it was like this movie actually has characters in it, which so many movies that I bitch and complain about all the time. It feels like I'm you know talking to people about movies probably right. here on this show a lot saying like, yeah, but they don't, you know, there's no real people in the movie. Right. And I mean, I don't know if these are real people because I mean, some of the dialogue that they have in some of the situations, I assume like, you know, vice squad cops would go in and go like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. And that's bullshit. But it feels, they feel genuine. I think it's the performers more than it is the dialogue, but like there are real character moments in this movie. And I did not expect that going into it. And like all the characters are fantastic. I mean, I know we've been singling out, you know, may is a larger than life character, sure. but so is, I Kit. can't remember her name. Well, I was going to say well, Kit. Kit Obviously, is Kit's my Kit's favorite great. because Kit's Kit great. is we like, love Kit. Yeah. I love Kit. Cause Kit has like this. I mean, he has an arc. I mean, they, I guess they all do, but even the, the landlady, and I guess to a much lesser extent, uh, you know, yo-yo. But sure, uh, sure. just the life, uh, they feel like these lived-in kind of parts, which again, you know, again, we're talking about an exploitation movie. You're not supposed to really get this out of it. You know, right. an exploitation movie is about the uh, the girls, the boobs, the guns, the blood, the serial killers stalking them, the cops are chasing them down, and you get all that. And actually, I thought served a lot of that stuff up, you know, like, at, at, competent or maybe a little even better than competent for given the budget level uh, that it was at. So, I mean, I was just kind of sitting there going like, wow, I really like this movie, like in spite of itself. And I mean, I think other people should see it. I think, you know, again, your preconceptions of what you've heard about it. If you think that there's going to be some necrophilia serial killer, (laughs) it sounds just the whole enterprise sounds really sleazy. And I do appreciate that the filmmakers are not as sleazy as I thought they were going to be. Mm-hmm. Like I can see a yeah. modern yeah. filmmaker and this is the thing, like if Rob Zombie had this or, you know, somebody, Ugh. it's just like, it would be, <laughs> yeah. it would be repulsive, you know? And yeah. maybe it was at the time. I mean, maybe this maybe. is the thing, maybe our attitudes have changed and maybe this was like the height of repulsion in 1984. Maybe. Well, and if it was a Rob Zombie movie, there would be no kindness in it whatsoever. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, it would be so Very mean. Sure it would just be a kindness. mean yeah. movie. Like, yeah. those characters, like, they are kind to each other, you know? Like, that whole thing would be completely cut out of it if it was yeah. a Rob Zombie movie. I'm glad you brought that up, mm-hmm. Michaela, because, ironically, the reason that I thought to bring this movie to the free show this <laughs> week was I was doing the counter-program the Thanksgiving movie, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like family, like, like yeah, family, it was like, this right. is the family movie, the and family I think I said together. that. Although you know I'm like, it's a family movie. I get it. You know what? <laughs> I get it. I, yeah, like, I get it too. Also, it's the family you choose, not yeah. the family. Yeah, well, yeah. they even yeah. say or the family out of necessity, right? Yeah, Cause, like right. she had no yeah. other. These family. are people who look out for each other and genuinely seem to like each other's company. Yeah. Yes, we're talking about a movie about a teenage hooker and like a serial killer. Yes, but they're yes, so loving are. towards each other, though. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it there are is feelings. a well uh, observed uh, of human behavior movie, and that's why I think I credit the writer director. I assume that he saw people like this in his research for Vice Squad, mm. uh, which is another one. I think you know. Again, you should watch. Uh, but I think he saw these people. And figured out a way to incorporate them into uh, his film. I think he also maybe wrote and directed Avenging Angels. So I, Yeah, I think he did. Too, um, yes. But yeah, I mean, I would definitely it. recommend this movie for sure. You have to check out Angel. I don't know how you're going to find it. But it is How'd available it, on is... Uh, like Amazon for like seven bucks with all go. three of the Angel collection. So uh, if you can stand, you know, getting that in the mail with that cover. The girl in the bobby socks <laughs> on one side and the yeah the prostitute on the other. So that's Angel on Saturday Night Freak Show. And next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What Wait, hold on, hold week? on. Oh, did God. we mention what? that Donna what? Wilkes is in Jaws two? I know we talked. Oh yeah, about we, it, we have. We didn't mention it at all. The lead star in this movie, right, is, is in Jaws Donna 2. Wilkes. She's in Jaws two. Yeah. She's the hysterical girl. Uh, when the shark attack does happen. At the uh, end, yes, she is the By one the who has to be consoled. Yeah, uh, you'll recognize her because oh, yeah. I I started watching this movie. I'm just like, she looks very familiar. Jaws two, Jaws two. Okay, sorry. The only Sean other is choosing. Sean next week. What are we watching? 
Um, well, we are in the, uh, it feels like we're in the holiday shopping season. We are. So I feel like we need to watch Chopping Mall. All right. I feel like that's what we need to do. It's a brisk, like, 86 it minutes is, or something, It is, and I've right? never yeah. seen it before. I've never seen it either. I've never what? seen I've it. Really? I've never seen it. I've I'm the only one who's ever seen it? Yes. Oh, shit. Which feels right. like a sin on all our parts. It does. Like, yeah, it's it does. It's Chopping Mall. It feels like we should have seen this. So like next week. Jim Wynorski movie or yes. somebody. Okay. Yeah, it is. I'll just say the poster is misleading. Like, yeah, I feel very like there's robots things. and shit. Wasn't the yeah. original there is title robots. Killbots? Is it my thing? Maybe. Yeah, we'll okay. discuss we'll it. We'll find out next, next week. We'll find out next week. <laughs> when we watch Chopping Mall. Chopping, Chopping Mall. On the Saturday Night Freak Show. And don't forget, kids, send in your requests Please. for uh, send in movies your picks. that you should watch. What do you, what do you want us to watch? Not what do you want to watch. January is all about you. It's a new year. It's a new right. you. This is your Let's opportunity because, <laughs> you know, we're going to ignore your shit for the rest of the year. Yeah. But if you want us to watch something. This is it. This is Now's your chance, man. This is it. This is your only opportunity. Are you going to bring this year's dead heat? Are you going to do right? it? Are we going to talk about your movie for the next five years? Yes. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll never know. We won't know until it happens. So submit away. Mm-hmm. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.